Hi everyone, I'm really glad to, to be with you tonight. So uh, I'm presenting myself, I'm Johan, and I'm a senior cloud developer advocate working here at Microsoft. And if like me, you like working in a clean environment, then I think this talk is for you. I'll just start by telling you the story of a developer that lands on a new project. So what happens when you're getting started in your new project? First thing first, welcome to the team. And then usually you're given up uh, the doc to set up your environment, provided there's one. After that, you take some time to install all the required tools to prepare your environment and start working on the project. But what usually happens next is a few days later, you still don't have a working environment. And I've been that developers a few times already. So what happens? First thing usually is that maybe the documentation is not up to date, but frankly, uh, I can't be blaming the developers because I've been there and uh, since it's not every day that you welcome a new developer, new project. So probably that uh, taking time to update the docs uh, every week or so uh, might not be worth it. Also, uh, surely you probably have installed on your envi local environment the tools that were in the doc, but maybe not the exact same version that you need to be able to work on your new projects. Or maybe that you, the tools that you already have installed conflict with other projects or other environments you have set up for working on different things. So the thing is, we already know how to solve these problems because we had the same issues for the runtime environments when we were shipping applications to productions. And we solved these issues by packaging our runtime environments into containers. So why not use containers for development environments? So again, I, I will be focusing on container this time, but I will be also speaking about the remote development uh, extensions for VS Code that Bridget uh, just presented earlier. So now I'll start by showing you how it works concretely on a, on a project. So let me switch to my desktop here. Okay. So now you can see my VS Code open here on a project I just cloned. This is a new project. Uh, it's a C Sharp Web API that I, I need to start working on. So obviously I have VS Code installed with this remote uh, development extension installed, but I don't have any tools needed to work on it. If I try, for example, to use the, the .NET CLI, uh, you can see that it's not working because I did not have installed anything. So of course I could like open a C sharp file, make some modification, but I won't I wouldn't be able to like build a project or run it to test if everything's working correctly. So what can I do? If you take a look at the status bar in the bottom left here, you can see this little green icon. If I click on it, I have this option. Uh, I can choose reopen the project in a container. So what it will do, it will reload VS Code. But this time, instead of uh, being able to work in my local environment set up uh, on my machine, you can see already that I have like a different shell here. Uh, previously, I was using Z shell. That's the shell I have installed on my local machine. But now uh, it's a bash. And for example, if I try the .NET command again, you can see that this time it's working. There are some times that uh, that has been done. And um, this thing is that I'm now connected. Uh, you can see that in the status bar in the bottom, you can see that I'm connected to my uh, development container. So how does it work? You can see here at the top that I have this .dev container folder, and this folder contains two files. The first one is a regular Docker file. You may be already uh, familiar with it. So this Docker file, basically, uh, it tells what kind of environment I need to work on this project. So here I'm using a pre-built image uh, provided by Microsoft. But if I need any tools that are not provided in this, I can just customize the, this file and add any tool I might need to be able to work on my project. The second one is also interesting. It's called devcontainer.json. If I open it, you can see there that I have a few options uh, to set up how I want to work in this specific development uh, container environment. You can see that I can change the name. The name is what will be uh, shown in the bottom, so we can be sure that you're connected to the right environment. I can specify here uh, which Docker file I need to use. You can set up some settings you want uh, for building your Docker file. For, for example, if you need to change a few settings uh, for your particular uh, setup. And then you have also another inter interesting options. 
So you saw earlier that the bash used uh, when I'm connected to this development container is not the same one I'm using locally. This is because here in this settings part, I can choose to set different settings uh, for when I'm working in this specific container environment than the settings I have locally on my machine. That means that you can set specific VS Code settings that will be used uh, for every developer on your project that will uh, start working using this uh, specific container environment. So this, this is great for sharing settings, uh, specific VS Code settings from, the, from other developers in the project. There's also another cool thing here is that you have the option to specify extensions that will be installed uh, when I'm working in, again in this specific uh, container environment. So here you can see that I have the C Sharp extension and if I open here on the left, the extension tab, you can see that I have a pane with my local extension as usual, but I have also a new one. Uh, these are here, uh, the C Sharp extension is in installed inside the development container and not uh, on my local machine. Meaning when I close this project and I work on a, another one, I won't have this extension available. That means uh, you can clearly have complete separate environment. Uh, you can also have your own extension installed and shared within uh, developers of your project for this particular development container. That means you won't have conflicts of different extensions. Uh, for example, if I'm working on a Java project, I surely don't want to have this extension in, uh, enabled. So that's really neat for keeping all things clean. And last thing is that I also have the option to forward specific ports because uh, as you know, containers are completely isolated environments. But in this case, I'm working on a, on a web API. So if I want to be able to test this API and see if things are working, I need to be able to connect uh, to my API from the outside world, meaning my local machine. So this time, if I try to run the project, uh, let's run this project to see how it's working. You can see that it's building the project. It will take some time. And then uh, what it will do, it will run uh, the server as usual, but within the container. And I will try, okay, you can see that it's running on my uh, localized environment on power 5000, but it's within the development container. So if I didn't specify any uh, anything, I wouldn't be able to connect to, to this container. But because I've set up here to forward these two specific ports, if I switch back to my local browser and try to hit this URL. You can see some JSON here, meaning that I can still access my uh, the, my server running inside my development environment as usual. So here, that's great. I've shown you how to uh, to be able to, to work in your environment. Let me just conclude that by reopening the same project, but locally. Just because, uh, as I've said uh, in the title of my talk, I like to keep things clean. So this time I've disconnected from this container. It was closed and I'm again on my local environment. And you can see that I still don't have uh, any tools uh, related to, to C Sharp and .NET installed on my local machine. It's all within the container. So everything is clean uh, inside this development container. Now, what if I want to get started on a new project? How do I set up a project to be able to work like that? So. I move on to a completely blank uh, VS Code project. So uh, just to give you a bit of context, I'm a JavaScript developer, uh, mainly myself. So I have uh, an old Node.js environment installed locally on my machine. So I can show you that uh, locally, I have the V12 version of Node.js installed here. But for this new project, uh, I would like to be able to use the latest Node.js version. So how do I do that again? I click on the bottom left to open the, the extensions tools. I will select this time add development container configuration files. So what will uh, appear is a list of possible container configuration already uh, prepared for you. So you can see that I have already a lot of options here. For example, working with C++, Dart, C Sharp, F Sharp, Java, or Node.js. That's what I will choose here. I'll choose the latest uh, uh, LTS version, version 14. And what it will do, it will create these two files, the Docker file and the dev container.json file. So next thing, if I if I want to get started and uh, to work on this project, I do the same thing as last time. I 
open again the extension and select reopen in container. It will switch back uh, to the container. The first time it might take a while because it's, it will be building the, the Docker image, but the, the first, uh, the later run will be uh, faster. So, okay. It will open here my new environment. It may be a bit uh, tough for my computer. Uh, okay, so now if I try to run the Node.js version, you can see that uh, I now have version 14 available. So meaning I'm still connected uh, to the container environment and uh, I, I will have no issue working on different projects, having different version of, uh, of the tools I need. So that's really a neat thing here. So moving back to uh, my slides, let me switch back here to the slide. I have one last thing I would like to, to show you. Uh, there, it was already presented uh, in the introduction and also uh, in uh, Bridget's talk, but it's code spaces. Because everything I demonstrated you uh, from using a local container environment, you can do it uh, directly on GitHub. And what's the advantage is? Uh, the thing is, maybe you're working uh, on a machine that's not a developer machine, so it doesn't have enough RAM, enough CPU to be able to, to be uh, working um, comfortably with your project. Or maybe you don't even want to install VS Code or Docker or the remote extension on your machine. You basically have nothing. So here, if I switch back again uh, to my browser, You can see that this GitHub contains the exact same C Sharp project I've shown you earlier. And in this code button, I have this code space extension. For that, uh, of course, since it's in early access, you have to, to be enrolled into that. So I will put my, uh, my glasses to, to give you a glimpse of the future of uh, what you may be uh, able soon to, to do is like, uh, once you click on this Open in Code Spaces button, you get this exact same uh, friendly VS Code environment that I've just shown you earlier. But if you notice the difference is that now I'm running completely in my browser, meaning that I don't need to have anything installed on my local machine. And I can still have the exact same tool that were uh, available locally when I was connected to my local container. But this time, I'm working completely uh, on the web in GitHub Code Space. So that's really great. For example, uh, if you're a contractor and uh, if you want like uh, to work a few days on a project but don't want to to uh, set up everything on your machine, uh, this is a great way to be able to like uh, just maybe prepare a pull request uh, or help fix a quick bug uh, in any project uh, in your company. So that's it for my talk. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, Every resources, every repo uh, I've shown on the slides also for this talk will be available at this URL. You can scan this QR code to, to get right into it. And uh, thank you for, for listening. If you have any question, you can use the chat. Or uh, if I can't answer it right now, you can always uh, message me on Twitter later. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much, Johan. So uh, one, I have to ask those glasses. Can you put those back on? The glass, can you hear me, Johan? Hey, yes. Yeah, yeah, those glasses. Do you usually code with those glasses on? Right? Uh, that will be a bit difficult. It's, uh, it's like just special glasses to, to take a look into the future. That's uh, yeah, okay. not really practical <laughs> for coding. <laughs> very good, very good. All right, so one quick question for you. Um, so this was great, it was fantastic seeing, you know, setting up using containers. In some situations, you might have a more complex development environment, right? So what if you need more than one container? How would you approach doing that? Exactly. What I've shown you in this demo is uh, show you like the, the basic workflow if you need to connect to one single container. But once you, you start uh, working with container, usually you start having a lot of containers. For example, uh, if you're working on a web project, you might need to spawn a database in its separate uh, container. And of course, you can do that. It will require a bit more setup, but uh, let just me tell you that you can have as many containers as you need for, new, for your project. And instead of a single Docker file, you can specify to use a Docker Compose 
uh, .yaml file that you can use to set up a complete environment, uh, meaning if you need to have multiple containers, you can have as many as you need. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so, and then there's some questions coming from the chat, but I think it might be best to answer over Twitter, but just to give you a heads up, folks are asking about how you would add Z shells Z -Zush, to the container. Um, when you run a Docker image or container, is it, is this always running on your local machine? Maybe you can answer that one actually. Is it always running on your <laughs> local machine? Uh, for now, I've set up Z shell on my local machine. And honestly, I didn't, uh, try to set up one in a container. So that might be try interesting to try. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Johan. Thank you, Brian.